Just like the licking branch and rubs, scrapes are another major form of communication for deer. The most aggressive will use by bucks during the pre-rut, those will scent check the scrapes and work the licking branches, but they ain't always going to urinate inside the scrape. Now I like licking branches not always having scrapes underneath them, scrapes are almost always done underneath the licking branch. Now it may not seem like it, but there's a ton of information being exchanged at these sites from hierarchy and health conditions and social status and pheromones and a bunch of other stuff that we don't understand. Now whether or not every deer uses the scrape, the message is still loud and clear just by scent checking. Think of it as a Facebook for deer, but instead of posting messages and pictures and memes, they're posting scent. Say Mr. Big Shot wants to see what's going on with everybody tonight or just update his social status. It starts in the licking branch and ends in the scrape. Bam, he posted his message, said what he needed to say, and logs off. Then later on, Jane Doe comes through and she reads his message. Now whether or not she responds and how she responds, that's up to her. But in the deer world, this is equivalent to the estrus cycle. Likewise with little old Spike Lee, just because he didn't respond, don't mean he didn't read the post. He just don't want to be an intruder buck as a subordinate buck. Now if you ain't ever seen it happen, a scrape is made whenever a buck paws up the ground, then he'll do what's called rub urinate. This is when he urinates down the back of his legs and rubs his tarsal glands together. Which explains why you see the black stained hawks during a rut. Ultimately, this scent is unique to him alone, and in fact, deer can identify each other individually just from this scent. So this is his way of marking his territory and letting potential mates know he's in the area. Sometimes young bucks will lick their tarsal glands at the rub urinating because they don't want the attention of the dominant bucks. And it's not uncommon to find multiple scrapes in a row of 50 yards or more. These are called scrape lines and are usually secondary scrapes that may or may not be revisited. Secondary scrapes are smaller and random, but it's a good indicator that the rut is nearing. Now primary scrapes are those big, huge scrapes that sends hunters into fringes. These are placed more strategically and often used annually by the same bucks. Now these are the ones you want to hunt over, but if you ever come across one, man, you better be careful. Because mature bucks will set up downwind from them, and they'll scent check them from the bed without ever setting foot in a scrape. So what you want to do is scout the area, look for your thick cover where he's probably bedding at, figure out where your trails are coming and going from, figure out the wind direction on the day you'll be hunting, then return to that area only when you have a plan of attack. Now it's worth mentioning that the University of Georgia did a two year study on scrapes here in North Georgia and what they found was that 85% of scrape activity happens during the night. Now with that said you can have success hunting these areas if you play your card dry. Right. You might can even draw them out of his bed with an intruder scent, an ester scent, or doe pee. But moderation is key and season is key. Don't go using esters before the rut or after the rut and you want to make sure that you're taking care of your own scent control by hunting the wind or using scent control products or you'll blow the whole area up. Now some key locations to find these would be at trail intersections, back in deeper cover, or around feeding and bedding areas. Now if you're planning on hunting them, then wait till about a week before the peak of the rut, because once does are receptive and bucks are chasing the ruts in full swing, the scrapes start to dry up. Now to make a mock scrape or to doctor up an old one, just find the proper location, make sure you got the overhanging licking branch, create out a three to five foot circle, careful not to touch your head to the licking branch. Now if you got it or can get it, a pre-orbital gland lure works great on the licking branch. Now, down on the ground we want to use a tarsal gland lure in combination with a doe pee or an invader buck lure or if the timing's right, an estrus lure. And that's it. Hope this was able to help y'all. Appreciate y'all for watching and we'll see you next time.